we're switching gears from web. We're going to move into, or sorry, we're switching gears from binaries. We're going to move into web. Uh, as I mentioned at the top of the hour, um, I'm going to try to post some resources for binaries because uh, a lot of the CTFs are still very much binary based and binary challenges. So uh, those type of vulnerabilities are always important to know and to understand. But we haven't gone over web in three years, I don't think, so um, a lot of, I don't think anybody here was actually there for that. Uh, so I'm going to kind of slowly go over the slides. Uh, I think I'm going to jump around. We don't have to talk about the birth or the design, even though it's uh, very cool. Uh, so the key ideas behind the web. Is that on this slide? Uh, <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> Dropbox, I just email you. What's that? I just email you oh, yeah, Dropbox. No, no rush. I think I saw you at the Mesa Heatsink Lab, right? Uh, Did you go there? I met no, you somewhere. I didn't really get it. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see that group. What's that? I didn't see that group. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Are you okay. doing any? Wait, so, what? so, the web has three really important technologies URLs or URIs. So, this is where kind of going over the basic, very basic goal of yeah. progress to attacks. We, URLs, right? So this is fundamentally the web is created of how to find documents on other computers, right? So the URI that you see in your URL, in your bar of your browser, tells your browser exactly what requests to make to fetch that resource. So URLs will generate HTTP requests, which we'll look at. HTTP is the hypertext transport <laughs> protocol. This is how your browser, your client, talks to a server to try to fetch some document on it. Then finally, what you'll get back will typically be an HTML page, where HTML is the hypertext markup language. So if you've never right-clicked on a website and looked at the source and said view source before, you're going to do a lot of that now. Uh, and the beautiful thing about the web, why, this is why I like this, this beautiful circular nature, is in that HTML page, there are hyperlinks which point you to new URIs to make new HTTP requests to get new documents, which are new HTML, to make new links, right? So that's why the web has this beautiful circle. So really, to really understand what the heck's going on at a really low level, you need to understand all these different technologies. So we'll just kind of split it out uh, really quickly. So URIs are very similar to what we know. There's a scheme, so typically we're used to using HTTP or HTTPS, right? So that tells your client whatever protocol you want to use. The I, uh, so I, URL is Universal Resource Locator, and URI is, I forget, Universal Res something. Uh, identifier. It's identifier, but is it a resource identifier? Uniform resource yeah, uniform resource. Uniform resource, resource okay. identifier. So it's more broad than the web itself. This is why when you see links that have, you can have FTP colon slash slash, or you can have mail to colon, and that's an email. So there's a bunch of different schemes that are actually defined in a standard somewhere that specify what applications and what, what these things mean. Um, so these are the incredibly important parts of a URL, and these, understanding these allows you to understand web and web vulnerabilities. So scheme tells you what to use. You said HTTP, HTTPS, the authority means what server do I go talk to, right? So typically this will be a domain name. So this will be google.com. So it's everything, the way to read this, right, is everything from the colon to the slash is going to be the authority. So this says, who do I get this page from or this document from? After that, everything from the slash to the first question mark, and this is, all of this is optional. So everything from the slash to the question mark is the path. This is a path just like in the Unix file system, right? So folder directories, that's kind of what it represents. But really, it doesn't mean anything. It only has meaning to the authority to that server. So if you go to google.com slash docs, right, it's going to redirect you to Google Docs. It doesn't mean that there's a folder or a file called documents or docs on google.com servers. They can do whatever the heck they want with these paths. 
after that, we have the query, which is incredibly important. So we have the query section here, um, which is a series of key value pairs. Um, and we'll go into that in a second. Followed by a hash sign, or uh, a hash. And after that, so the idea is, uh, the path tells you what document you're trying to get. This is traditionally how this is. A query is any additional parameters. And the fragment, though, is only used by the client. So a key thing here is when you talk, ask the browser for something, every, nothing after the hash is sent to the server. It's only used. So this is how when somebody sends you a link to the middle of a web page, this is how they're doing it, because they're sending you a link to a fragment or a sub-document or sub-resource. Um, yeah, blah, blah, blah. So the uh, correct syntax for the authority is username at host colon port. So this is how you can specify a username when you're visiting this server. And you can also specify a password, too. But usually it'll just be the host. If it's just host, it, the scheme will depend on what port it's going to use to make that connection. Otherwise, you can specify the port to use non-standard ports. Path, hierarchical, select, right, right, slash. Um, query is used to pass non-hierarchical data. Fragments, of so it's cool. Some examples, so we have a scheme foo for the host example.com with a port of 8042. The path is over there, and the parameters are test equals bar. So this means we have a parameter, a query parameter of test, and the value of that parameter is bar. Yes. If you do multiple parameters, how do you set yes. that? You don't have an example. You separate them with ampersands. So you do ampersand new key equals new value. Um, you can have FTP as one in here. This is a valid URI. Also mail to links. So this is one of your writing web pages if you want mails to pop up. Uh, HTTPS. So here we have um, something interesting, right? So we have a colon here. So that's not part of the port. But that's fine, because we know everything from here to the first question mark is part of the path. Right? That's how we parse this. Top, yep. We have scheme, colon, scheme, colon. Authority is host, colon, port. And then from the first slash all the way to the first question mark, that is the path. Yeah. This whole thing is the path. And then the query, so this is mall formed because of this right here. Right? So we have the question mark, but then we have a slash. We don't have something equals something else. right? So part of the problem here is we can't parse this because we have special characters, essentially, in our URI syntax. Right? We have the colon, we have slash, we have question mark, and we have the hash symbol. So if we wanted to try to access a document that had a question mark in the name, using this we wouldn't be able to do it because it would mess up parsing. So we have to use escaping. So this is. A lot on the web has to do with escaping and how you change special characters to make them mean something else. So this is a list of all the reserved characters that you're not supposed to ever use in a URI. Um, and we know what they are. What's the special character we use? So like when you're coding in like C or Java, and you have a double quoted string, how do you include a double quote in that double quoted string? Backslash. backslash. Yeah, you have to put a backslash first, right? The backslash double quote doesn't mean I want a backslash character and then a double quote, yeah. right? It's a special character that says, I actually want a double quote, right? This double quote isn't to end the string. This double quote is an actual double quote that I want here. <coughs> so in URIs, they have used uh, the percent symbol. So the percent symbol, um, so these are all the reserved characters. And I believe percent should be on here. So you can basically percent encode anything. Um, and you must do it to encode anything that's not alphabetic, digits, dash, dot, underscore, or tilde. Um, so the idea is, it's actually pretty easy. You do uh, percent, and then the two, a hexadecimal representation of the byte. So for instance, a space character is not any, it's not alphabetic, it's not a digit, it's not dash, dot, underscore, or tilde. So if you want to include a space in your URI, you do percent 20, because hex 20 is ASCII value for space. And if you ever don't, if you ever don't know, I'm also a big fan of the man, man command. I always use man ASCII to look this stuff up. The whole 
hexadecimal set here. So you can see 20 is space. So that's how you include space in URIs. If you want to include a double quote, it's space 22. If you want to include a colon, it's space 3A. Um, and that's why when you look at a URI that you get, it's going to look really weird because all these characters are encoded in this way. How do you encode a percent sign? Can you just use percent? Why not? Because it's part of the, it's the special character. Yeah. So how do you represent it? Two of them? <laughs> no. No way. So Find that hexadecimal coordinate. What is it? Two uh, 25? Way. Yeah, percent 25. So yeah, so it's kind of nice. Thing. Instead of doing something special, right, like doubling it up, they say, well, we already have a way to do this. You do percent 25 represents um, percent encoding. So percent is the same as that? Yes, exactly. So for instance, the ampersand will be percent 26, so percent will be percent 25, space percent 20, and so on. So we can fix this example. So what are we going to replace here to fix our example? Criteria. What do we not have to? We can't have the uh, colon. We can't have the colon. So we have to encode that and then let somebody else. So dots is there? No, dots, it's, dots fine. It's A through Z, digit, Four. underscore, dash, dot, tilde. Question mark. What was it? Question mark. Question mark. Yeah, well, it kind of actually depends <laughs> on what we want it to do. Right? and what we actually want to request. Uh, so if we wanted to do example.com slash test slash example colon one dot html question mark with question mark part of the path and then slash Adam, we would encode it, uh, we could encode this percent character, this, um, this question mark. If we don't, then we'll encode the slash. If we wanted this just to just be Adam. So this is acceptable syntax for a query parameter. So you can have key values. You can also have keys without actual I did not go over, so it's good, good practice for all the ones who Okay, um, I'm going to skip this for now. Uh, let's see, I'm going to go. There's a difference when you look at a URI, uh, it can specify different things. Um, I'm going to ignore this kind of for now, but I think you should revisit this on your own. Uh, so, HTTP, so this is what we're going to, so it's a very old protocol. It's basically the from the beginnings of the web when 91 is when this came out, and there really have not been that many changes. Um, more and more uh, version HTTP 2 will be released, and the, the usage is still not really there, so we'll just focus on HTTP. Um, basic idea, it's a completely stateless protocol. So the client makes a connection to a server based on the URI, mm -hmm. right? So it, asks, it looks for the authority, says, what server do I need to talk to? Makes a TCP connection to that server. Says, hey, I want to make a request for this document. The server processes that, reads the request, and sends an HTTP response. So fundamentally, HTTP has two things, requests and responses. Uh, yes, so request response. You don't need a diagram for that. Uh, unfortunately, reality is a lot more complicated. There's caching involved. There's firewalls in the middle. There's proxying. There's natting even when you think about networking levels. Um, there's even like people do crazy stuff with memcached, and now you have like content networks. Anyways, um, we can just still think about it in this very simplified model. So requests. What we are going to do, I want, let's look at an HTTP request. So everybody, uh, what's the best way to do this? What operating system is everybody running? Does everybody have access to a Linux box? Yeah. Yeah. I think by now I'm not sure. Well, we Okay. If you're, I think, is there a TCP? Ah. So, one of the best tools, well, I have to check out my configuration. Um, I also don't want to make sure I'm getting anything. So, you. Yeah, you got tunnels. Install TCP dump if you have not. TCP dump is what we're going to use. I want you to, I have to figure out what now. I'm going to base zero. So I want you to.
you to listen using TCP dump on your interface, and I want you to listen for port 8. I wonder if those are port 80. If you just listen on port 80, this will listen on your local interface for any HTTP requests that are making. So the default port for HTTP is 80. The default port for HTTPS, which is the SSL secure version, is 443. Those are good things to remember. Do we have to do anything if it's running on VM? Do we have to do anything different? have to figure out, use ifconfig to figure out what your interface actually is called, so that should go after the dash i parameter, which is interface. You want to use the dash n because this will disable uh, remote DNS. DNS, yeah, so it'll try to resolve all the IP addresses it sees to remote uh, to a DNS name, and so the dash n, it makes it faster, is essentially what happens. So do that in one parameter, or in one window, I want to see. Oh yeah, we're not doing anything. We're staying right here. Yeah. Right. Okay, and if you want to see this in another window, or tab, or whatever, however you want to use it, curl google.com. this n0 argument to the i argument. So if you put the a, if you switch those, it's not going to work. Because it will think that the a that you're sending is the parameter to the i interface. Anyways, you have to be cognizant of what parameters take values and which ones do not. Yeah, which interface am I doing with T3 dollar? On ETH zero, so that'll okay. be your external. Yeah. So this is different. If most Linux, most uh, Linux machines use ETH zero, it's going to be the default interface. Um, but Mac is based on BSD, so it uses N. Almost sometimes my Ubuntu ones do that, like switch over to N. What does the A do? Huh? What does the A do? The A oh, yeah. prints out the ASCII values here of each packet that it receives so that we can actually look at the request that we're sending.
listening to every request that this computer is making on port 80 or any any IP any TCP traffic that's happening on port 80 is what you're looking at okay so this is all so if you go up you can see you go down a little bit so, so that is the HTTP uh, response you go up we we just see that, see that is your request okay. Okay. so you're asking yeah. that well, mm -hmm. see this this IP address, so that's your computer. So this is an IP packet okay. from so that was, uh, new people, so your that was computer not pointed. at this weird code uh, port to that IP address. So we just start something new. Yeah. That would be Google. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then it's making yeah. a get. So what did they mean? Pretty much a just TCP dump and then curl. So this is the request. That's the HTTP request that's making to Google. And you can look down and see that this is its reply. So it's actually doing a redirect. It's telling you, actually, I want you to look for www.google.com. Yes. And that's why if you go in your browser and type in google.com, it will go to first www.google.com and then https. He does record his lectures, right? So I can actually uh -huh. watch So yeah, lectures. we're just getting our feet wet. I want you guys to look at the site to be able to look at this because this is really handy to be able to look at the traffic. Yep. How would you Yeah, well, I'm not going to miss anything when I watch his video, right? Uh, it's going to be I don't think we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll see. Usually, here we're more CTS. Let me see. Uh, so, so, right? so, like, uh, the things yeah, I try and teach are things that are going to appear on CTF style things. Yes. I know. Think about it. You're in my class, right? Yeah. So, just think about it. Okay. We'll put some of the man in the middle stuff we're talking cool. about. So he just talked about those things, stuff. and bes besides that, he just like yeah. show people. You guys should get food. So, basically, what about you? Uh, Carl? <coughs> He's on a diet. <laughs> 
can we do like a uh, sandwich next time instead of pizza? Oh, that's fine. Oh, my God. Always got like a bunch of pizza. Like, we can do that. At Soda or Lux. So it's like, what, pizza sorry? out. I always get like pizza at Soda or Lux. So I'm like, pizza out. Oh, so you're like, <laughs> sick of saying, pizza like, already? <laughs> suggestion. I like to try a different thing. Life's too short for the same thing. Uh, you know? We can. Sweet. <laughs> the problem, the thing is like with, with like pizza, you can just have like a few pizzas and yeah, it's easy. It's easy to for people just grab either one slice or two slices. But with if it's sandwiches, you have to know how many people are going to show up because if you buy 15 sandwiches and 16 people happen to show up, is that the same as catering? How cater go? Because like they cut it off, right? Like I don't know, like. Yes. I don't know if it's cheaper or more expensive. Or I got your invite for Dropbox. <laughs> Let me click it in right here. <laughs> really far. It's like, yeah, like four floors down. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing? Good. Nice. Aren't you so sad now that now JJ is not around? Yeah. I feel like crying. What are we going to do without him? Some sort of like anorexic teenage girl or something. Oh, I have the snacks too. You want to bring the snacks? <laughs> Come in my office. <laughs> if you like it. <laughs> you well, can hear me, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the snacks. It's also recorded forever, so. Thanks. Oh, wait. Hang on. You did a friend. Move it this way. Yeah. It's a good thing, it gets everything. send this to our sponsor. So get in the picture. No, you just got out of the picture. Okay. Because they're going to get upset with, yeah. It's got this bright screen in its face. Yeah, that's why I was going down a little bit. Ah, you know what? Screw it. Let's do it anyways. But you have to be in the picture too. No, no. He wants to see his students. I'm not a student though, but okay. Okay. I'm just a freeloader who wants to see You also heard that too. <laughs> you know, we, we, we should have put all our female students up front so it looked like we had more and then we, the guys were all hidden behind. <laughs> I think it's fine. Yeah, you're gonna come on over. Okay, uh, okay, so everybody's done this. Got about at the right place. Okay, so now let's look through what maybe, hopefully, as we've seen some stuff. So you should scroll kind of towards the top. Uh, wow, okay, I got a lot of stuff here. We switched to web. Will. What? FYI. We switched to web. To web? Yes, web. Oh. Web. Not web. Yeah, because HMI fails. I'm recording. OK. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we look at what's going on here, what is going on here? <laughs> well, it just got a document moved, so it can't really sound. Yes, no, no, I know that part. OK, so if you look to kind of, so if you looked at everything, you could pinpoint the exact. So TCP dump looks at every packet that's getting sent and received based on your filter. So we'll, we're filtering it so it's only port 80 traffic that we're seeing. Um, 
and we can see that here because this is port 80. So this means we're making some requests from here to this IP address on port 80. Uh, the flags of this are very weird, which I don't understand. I think something must have gone wrong here. Um, but basically, this is the start of a TCP handshake. So if you don't know what that is, you should definitely refresh your networking skills and look at that. We're not going to cover it right now. Uh, but this three-way handshake, we first send a SYN packet. They send a SYN ACK packet back this machine on port 80 back to here. And finally, we acknowledge their transmission with an ACK. And then we push and send them our request. So in this, you should see this is the HTTP request that curl sent when we executed this curl HTTP colon slash slash google.com. And when we pick, pick it apart, we see get slash HTTP 1.1 host google.com. We have a user agent, which is curl, so this actually tells the server. Anyways, we'll get into what it, exactly what it is. But this is essentially the request, and I wanted us to be able to actually look at this, be able to do this, so then when we read the request, you actually have something to look at. Then we can see that we get a reply back from Google. So we get an HTTP 1.1. This is saying that we're talking the HTTP 1.1 uh, version. We get a response. There are various codes. 301 means redirect, look somebody, look somewhere else. And where do we look? HTTP colon slash slash www.google.com, right? So this is why when you type just google.com into your browser, you'll get redirected to www.google.com and then redirected somewhere else, and then it'll redirect you to HTTPS uh, google.com. Yes? So before that HTTP, what is the like garbage before that? Is that this the other part is of the parts of the packet, yeah. Oh, okay. So this is not anything to do with HTTP protocol. Uh, this is just the way TCP dump is parsed. I think it shows you the ASCII of like the entire packet. Mm -hmm. So this is includes all the oh, header okay. information. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's all a bunch of stuff we don't need, but it starts right here. Um, cool thing is it also does send us HTML. So it sends us some HTML that we can look at. Um, and then we finish and everything stops. So, all right. So requests, HTTP requests have a method. So there are various methods here. We have get, so this get is a method. There's a get post head, uh, put, delete, a uh, series of other ones, but there's a standard ones. We then have the resource. So which resource are we trying to get? Here we're just trying to get slash, right? Remember we typed in www, you know, just google.com. So what if we did google.com slash foobar when I'm actually recording? We will see that we will get slash foobar, right? So this is the part, the path that comes afterwards. So this is everyone after here, including the query parameters. So this would be uh, foo equals, okay. And you gotta make sure when you're typing this in, you wanna be in this, uh, foo equals bar. So here I'm passing in query of foo equals bar and baz equals random stuff. Wait, but it's slash foobar valid for Google? No, but it doesn't matter. Just I'm just trying. making a request. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of the important part about the web. Is whatever this is, it depends on Google.com. They're the ones that say whether this part is valid or not, right? If they don't have anything for it, then they'll ignore it. If they do have something for it, then they'll deal with that. Uh, so if we look at the request now, we can see we're doing get slash foobar question mark foo equals bar and baz equals this. So this is everything up until the hash mark. So the hash mark, everything is not sent. We also say the protocol. So the protocol, we're saying we're making an HTTP 1.1 request. Um, we send information about us, the client making the request. And sometimes the request will have a body if we're sending data to the server. Um, so yeah, where's my, yes, okay. So this is essentially the, the request that we just saw. There's a bunch of methods that it can use. You can go and review these, uh, but this is in essence what's going on here. Why do we need a host here? Why do we need this host header? Just uh, load it. But why is it necessary? Oh. <laughs> 
but I, <laughs> yes, but I typed in curl www, you know, I typed in curl google.com. Uh, do not resolve IP address to host name. I don't know what A is, interface, or A. <coughs> right, so I typed that. Like, so why, so I did a DNS query to turn yeah. google.com into an IP address. Right, so that's why. That, yeah, that's how we know which server to contact. So then why do I have to use this host? And resolve it to an IP address. So in dash n, we're stopping stop DNS letters. <coughs> well, you could just use that address. Capturing or could it switch uh, to somewhere else? Like different, like, different, like, different, like, different, like, different, like, different, 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 Every DNS name mapped to one IP address, and you did not have this host field, this means that you would, if you wanted to host a new domain, you would have to have a new IP address. So every single domain would have to be on a different IP address so it knows who you're requesting. Uh, the host header was added so that you could have multiple domain names share the same IP address. So for instance, that's how our lab works. So we have one external IP address. We host multiple websites <laughs> inside that IP address. Mm -hmm. And so we have a web server that looks, and depending on that host value, we'll send it to the right back end. Um, anyways, that's how, why that was added. But what if you curl but with an IP address instead? So here we curl without the IP address, we do the get, we see that it sets the host as that. So then the server gets to decide what does it want to do. Does it actually want to respond or does it want to just drop the request? Do they have a default set up or something? Uh -huh. It looks like here they just do the same thing. Yep. Actually a fun fact about Google is all of Google's external IP addresses will respond to any of the Google services. Later, why that's interesting. Okay, uh, this is a curl request. If you look, so now if you're running, I think what would be interesting is run the TCP dump, do a request in your browser. Where am I? Do a request in your browser to see what gets sent. So you be moving on with mark uh, put I have config to tell you which interface to look at. Wow. Okay. I don't know which one's the Google request because there are lots of requests. Um, but I, we can see that there's one request to gravatar www.gravatar.com. And we can see that this request is much more has much more header options than uh, than previously. So the things that are important, this has to be here, the first line, which is the method, the document you want to get, and then the protocol. And then after that is a series of uh, key value header options. That specifies host, we have connection keep alive. All these things mean different things, and there's RFCs that you can study to look at and you can see exactly what each of these things means. Cool. So modern requests are complicated. So the response, as we saw, so the response has the protocol version, first off, to tell us what exactly version of HTTP it's talking. It has a status code to tell us, you know, it needs to communicate to the client, was this request successful, was it not? If it failed, why did it fail? Was it a temporary failure, a permanent failure? Should the client look somewhere else for this resource? 
if they look somewhere else, should that be permanently they should look somewhere else? So this has always moved or has it never moved? All kinds of stuff. Um, so basically you have one line that has protocol version, status code, and a short reason, and then headers and a body. Uh, yes, so there's status code we can see. So we can see in this reply, the first thing we have is protocol, the next we have the 301 response code, and then we have short reason, followed by headers, so each of these are headers, and then we have a blank line, so technically at the end of each of these lines is a CRLF, those are the exact bytes that are there in those requests. Um, and then we have an empty line that signifies the end of the headers and the start of the body, and so then this is where your browser starts parsing and looks for this for HTML. Questions on this? So status codes, um, the 100s are very strange. I've never really seen one in practice. Um, they're used to say that like everything is, is good and going good. Um, 200 is the normal one, so 200 means everything was successful. So we got your, we received your request, we understood it, and we accepted it. Everything that starts with a three, so 300 levels, are all redirects, which say, actually, you need to go somewhere else. So this is exactly how, when you type in a URL or try to go somewhere, somebody sends you a link, you click, and they say, oh, you're not logged in, you're redirected to the login page. This is how that happens. Um, a 400 means you messed up, so the client made a wrong request. So what's the classic 400 error message? 404. 404 means not found, right? Well, it's not my problem, the server <laughs> says. You requested the wrong document, right? And so that's what a 404 error is. There's many different 400 type of errors. The other one is I messed up. So 500 is the server saying, oh crap, something went wrong. Sorry, like, I've never seen that. Uh, you've never seen that? No, no. Well, I don't know. No, no. Is that 403, though, forbidden? Yes, yeah. there's various, I don't know. You have to, you can, so this is just general codes, right? So everything that starts with a one, two, three, four, five mean these things, and then depending on what they are, so 200 has these couple things, uh, 300 has different types of redirects, so redirect just for this time or redirect always, um, and these affect the client behavior. Like you said, 400, yeah, 403 is forbidden, 401 is unauthorized, 400 means you made a bad request, so your HTTP request itself was wrong, which is a bad thing to be. Um, yeah, 500, uh, there's various oh, other 500 it, errors. Yeah. So um, this one, why are they giving us a 301 for Google.com? It's redirecting. Because yeah. they permanently want you to always go to www.google.com. So permanent redirect means that the browser can cache that result. And so next time you try to fetch Google.com, it knows that that's actually redirected to www.google.com. Does curl do that? No. It doesn't do any caching, it's just a command line thing. It just that's makes why whatever it gets error every time. Yep. Well, it's not an error. It's a burning message. Yes, exactly. The cool. browser is the one that does the caching. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. OK, so we can look at the act. So if we look at response to www.google.com, we can see that we get more information. You can do this on your own. So uh, you'll get like in 200 OK, it'll have the date that you made this. There's a bunch of cache controls to control any caches that are in between you and the other server to say whether it should cache it or not cache it. Also, that controls your browser, how long your browser will cache it. Um, it may set cookies on your browser, which we'll get to later. It has all kinds of stuff. What's um, private cache control? I don't remember. Cache control private means, I think that means your browser can cache it, but nobody else can cache it, right? Because if any other cache in between you and the browser cached it, that means if somebody else tries to fetch www.google.com, they'll get that result back. 
but Google customizes your homepage based on you. I did this while signed in, I think, or something. Um, and what else? Oh no, maybe private max age, max age zero. Max age zero, that means never cache it. Like, don't ever cache this. Um, content type is important because it tells your browser what is this body that you're sending. Because it doesn't have to be HTML, right? We can send get JavaScript files and movies or whatever uh, through there. So this text slash HTML, this is a mime type. It's another file <coughs> format that describes different types. Anyways, questions on responses? Cool. Uh, we're going to skip this. OK. The other thing, I think before we get into HTML, I think you all need to install the Burp proxy. B U R P. Yes, like a burp. Burp. So this is one of the best uh, tools a, on uh, for doing web application pen testing, and they have a great free version that you can use. some cool stuff. It like it has a scanner. It does have a pen testing like scanner component to it, so you can use it to automatically scan and pen test. But uh, really, that's you should be especially for the stuff that we're doing. You should be doing all of that. You don't want to rely. You're not going to have something that these tools can just automatically find. So um, plus, the way to learn is to do it manually. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, especially while you're learning. But using this is awesome. So every download, install this, get this running. It's Java, so it runs everywhere. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, and the other thing I think about full verb is it has a whole plugin, like an extension community. So you, other people have written, written cool stuff to like look for things and responses and do other kinds of things that can be cool. So. How about I turn it on? How do you turn it on? It is currently on. It is on, but yes. on. Yes. Okay. Oh, so I, I guess there in a second. Oh, you know what? I need a proxy. This, yes, you need to set it up. I usually use Firefox. Firefox is the browser that's easiest to choose a proxy for. Do you need to do an add-on or just, uh, just go don't. here and just turn on the proxy? To be honest, I don't know 100%. I think you may be able to change it in the networking setting. I'm just curious. I know you have the tally. I was like, wait, you put the thing in? Or is it your computer? Actually, I'm just helping because I can't resolve. Very uh, for a top I started on uh, uh, you can't resolve your DNS server at all. That is what Gary told me. I don't remember how to get the point and then I have to install Cali dash or dash pool. Is it worth command lines or is it? Yeah. Because I figured that out. Well, it's just one day for like some days here. It's fast. Oh, cool. So that looks like a script that will install that.
Dark Elder? Is this a game? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty sure. Yes. Nothing could come out of Dark Element unless you're like a demon. No, but you're not. <laughs> so it has to be a game. You're not one. Hey. Now you might be hacking uh, his account for him. Yeah, that I'll be nice. Yeah, do you? Wait, download for Linux or download for Java? What does that mean? Wait, do you download it to the Java file? Hmm? I guess you download the Java right? I just didn't download for. Like yep. What is this? I don't know what this is. Oh, it's so SH. What is the no, I want to play Dark. Look, the SH file is like 880 meg, egg, 80 megabytes. This is only 12 megabytes. So, I want to Dark. So this is the next one. The shell script that's 82 megabytes. This jar file is only 12 megabytes. And we're like, what the heck? But, but. Did they kill? No, there's still half of cheese people left. What was the last again? I'm sure some hungry hackers will take to it. Just for my file. So what should we do now? Okay. Yes. So. Once you got burp up and running, so the idea is burp is a proxy. So it's gonna sit in between you and the server that you want to test. So you, but by default that doesn't happen. So you have to set up your browser so that it knows to redirect requests through burp. So burp has a lot of different modules. I really only use about two. The module you wanna look at first is proxy. So the proxy tab, you wanna click on that. Uh, it'll say that intercept is on, which means that it's running. We'll see what this does in a second. Um, you want to look at the options tab, a sub tab of the proxy. So this tells you that you have a burp proxy running and listening on the interface. It's 127.001 port 8080. So this means that it is running and listening on your local host for incoming HTTP connections on port 8080. But we won't see anything unless we configure our browser specifically to do this. So um, I actually use Firefox basically as my pen testing browser. So I uh, only use Firefox to go through Burp because it's actually very easy to change the, uh, the settings here. So you have to go advanced, uh, network, settings, and then you have to say manual proxy configuration and your proxy that you want is that exact thing that's in here. You want localhost port 8080. So localhost port 8080, use this proxy server for all protocols. And you want to click OK. So now what should happen, so this is what you want. If I go to, we'll go to my website. Um, so it should hang. And why is it hanging? Well, when we look, we can see that this intercept what we've done is the browser sees the HTTP request that we've made and is pausing and waiting for us to do something. Uh, so you can forward that request on and you'll see other requests that get sent and more requests. Uh, and then you can click the intercept off so it won't bug you every time. But you should see in history all the requests that you made to this domain. Cool. If the intercept is off, it will still log them into the history? If what? If the intercept is off? Yes, it will still log it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, okay, you should get to this point where you're where you're proxying traffic in between your browser and um, and I need to go get my charger. Uh, 
uh, so you go to advanced, yeah. right? And then yeah, the settings, mm -hmm. and then uh, the network. You should put in, you need to go to manual proxy, I think. It's like the last uh, yeah. thing. And then you enter in, if you go to uh, burp, and then proxy, and then option, the option subtap, it'll show you uh, like 127.0.0. .0. Okay, so you use that guy. Yeah, so you use that. That one. That one. For the 
Basically, so essentially what you're doing right now is you're man in the middling all of your own traffic. Yeah. Right? So this is why if you try to go to uh, something like HTTPS, you should just turn off. Oh, man. It'll say the connection is not secure. You'll get this super scary page. Mm -hmm. Right? Because oh, the problem good. is you're not talking to Google.com. You're talking to the proxy, and the proxy is talking to Google.com. So account. Google can sense that? Or like yes. Yes, because. Uh, Burp says, yeah, I'm Google.com. I Trust me, I was signed by this port swigger certificate, which is the guy who created Burp. Uh, yeah. uh, and your browser goes, I don't trust that. No way. You're not Google.com. Uh, but what you can do, there is a way to add Burp certificate to your browser. I just don't remember how to do it. So, um, And you don't want, really want to do that for your normal browser, because then that means anybody as Burp can like man in the middle of you. So, um, don't necessarily Burp, oh, yeah. <laughs> but you can you can like yeah, like to it, I think. So it's yeah. and that one's stopped. And so if you pick oh, you can't even click that. Like that. that. It's interesting. <coughs> So you have JavaScript uh, running your, uh, your home computer, but 
your homepage on Dubai.com. Are you like uh, running statistics on this? Okay, so we all to this page, this space. Okay, cool. So one of the cool things if we turn intercept on, if we go to a non HTTPS site. Oh, okay. So it didn't. Uh, okay. So what you need to refresh. So now this actually can help you see exactly what's going on with your browser, right? So we can see that this is. So this shows you. So it shows you different views in the request. So this is the raw. This is the raw request that you're sending. Uh, the parameters are the cookie parameters that I'm sending. Well, I hope these don't mean anything. They're recorded now. Uh, all the headers that you're sending, and it can show you even the hex value of exactly what you're sending. Um, so you can look at cool things. You can see what it's sending. You can see that we're getting the home. We're getting slash. Uh, we're host is here, we have cookies, blah, 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 blah. Uh, we can also, I think, there's also an option to, you can intercept, so this has a bunch of options of what you want to intercept. So this is intercepting requests going out. So you can say, so basically the default, what I have here is, I mean, I didn't do this, this is what comes with my installation of verb, is intercept it if the file extension does not match if it's not a GIF or a JPEG or a PNG or a CSS or JavaScript or ICO. So it's not going to intercept any of those requests. You can also add whatever types of additional query filters to maybe you only want to intercept certain types of traffic. The same about the responses. You can intercept the responses that are coming back from the web server to mess with your browser uh, or to change the request. So one cool thing, and this is where it comes in. So you can do this on my site. I'm giving you permission right now. Uh, if you right click on any of the, so some cool things, you can uh, spider from here. So this will automatically go and crawl all the links. So as you proxy, your target is keeping track of all the sites that you're visiting. Mm -hmm. And it's keeping track of kind of what it sees as the sites in there. And you can click on them and you can see the requests that it's made and things that it's fetched. Um, so you can see actual requests that it's made. So one thing you can do in the proxy is you can right click on it and say spider from here. So you should only ever do this really on sites that you own, control, everything. Uh, outside the current spidering scope, yes, include that in the scope. So now it is the spider is going to go through and you can see it's making hundreds of requests to my own website to try to get all the content and try to see all the web pages. So this is not something you normally need to do because you should be interacting with the website you're trying to test, but this is just a good way to kind of see what's out there and try to double check. Um, oh, this is a lot of requests. You guys don't break out my website. <laughs> <laughs> with so many people doing it at the same time. Yeah, it should be fine. Let's hit them hard. Eat <laughs> up. So now you can see the whole structure of my website. Um, and you can see for any of these things, not only can you, you see the exact request that Burp made in order to get this page, you can also see the response that it got back. There's a bunch of other parameters. Um, Oh, I see your CSE stuff. I've only been teaching here for like two years. I thought you were like a, like a senior. <laughs> like senior as in like more than seven years. <laughs> oh, hang on, publications, 2010. 
Wait, you have keys? Uh, you have a GPT. What? Well, so that's literally my website. <laughs> I know it's on there. <laughs> okay, some other fun stuff we can do besides spidering my website. So, the other thing that's really cool that we can do, and this is something that I actually use all the time, this is what I was using when we were pen testing websites uh, for the CTF. So, right click, I do uh, send to repeater. So, repeater is a very cool module where you get the raw request that you see here, and you can change it and make the request again to see what happens. So, you can do get slash foo. You can click go, it will make the request, and on the right, it will show you the response. And so this is how I do a lot of my testing work, is testing parameters, testing things, seeing like, you can see what happens if I put spaces in between the HTTP things. Right? It'll say 404 not found, oh, interesting. I thought it would done it. It actually works. I could tell it I'm HTTP 2.0. It'll still say it's not found. Yeah, it still works. It's crazy. It's not even checking this. <laughs> so I know you're running fun too. <laughs> Because that's the, the response is 1.1. That's what it's oh, telling you. Okay. Yeah, you can alter the hex in right here, click. the headers. Yeah, this is a super handy way to, like, when you're pen testing parameters, this is what I do so I can see what the response is right away. No, no, that's not right. Do it all in here. So look, look how many, mm -hmm. see how many stuff you did so far? But you don't have anything about teaching. So the right of it, take this. No, this is the first time I've ever heard of it. Alright, now, play with it. Yep. Play with it. Oh, so I just want to do this. No, I'm spidering the holes. That issue. No, 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 but don't spider it. Do you have the pro version of it? No, no, I just have the free version. Oh. Yeah, how do you soak? It's too late now. Look, I got everything. So, restart your website? How do you soak it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
Are you one of the uh, 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 Are you one of the Oh, no. Oh, no. Are you one of the 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 Oh, no. If you turn it back on and then you crash, you can find it also. You, you, you come back. Uh, we are shutting down the uh, uh, <laughs> site. What is it? Ha ha ha. Okay. Uh, uh, see, everyone's Pokemon. Hmm. So, all this website? Wait, what is that? What is that? Hi. So, all this website are like things that he's linking or something? From his website. Right. Oh, then again, some of them are from Wait, you, by the way. I mean, you well, have from you. Uh, whatever your your Firefox is connected to it, so. I have only these steps. Wait, you know, did you connect to your Firefox or did you just scroll? It's just kind of difficult. <laughs> What? What is he doing? I don't know. Uh, I don't know why. <laughs> it's, uh, oh, this one has some loaded Jupico. What are you trying to do? Uh, uh, no, no, she's like, why is it? Just learning what, what this thing is. So she's, thinking, no, she's not asking me why is like, so she goes to her target list. There's like a bunch of like packages on budget.com. Like, well, that's probably caused by a. Uh, um, so now you can go over there and refresh and just everything. One of her sites on her web browser. Because every day you should see more requests. Wait, so you're, not, you're not in a uh, Linux world right now. Um, so, um, so why would that come out? Yeah, package.ifbundle.com. Yeah. I don't know. That's really weird. Unless, Unless you have she a went VM to VM running. You have a VM running, running on that. Too. Yes, I have. That's, that's probably it. Because yeah. that VM probably that, like is auto updating in the background. Yeah, but then it's not going to the proxy. So why would it? Yeah, why would it go to the proxy? Only Firefox should be going to, to oh, Barf, yeah, yeah. right? Barf only checks uh -huh. Firefox. So, like it's, it's only Firefox so traffic. Now, it is possible that uh, if Hey goes to Google, and Google goes to some site, some site then goes to packages.bungie.com. It's possible. That's, it goes for an infinite loop. But yeah, look how, look how far you, have, you got this whole list. Or he might have something on his website that he's just the correct places. security lab that Adam will use to. Oh yeah? Yeah. So they're the ones that sponsor this. this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So they are our sponsors. I thought you guys make a bump and fork sync or whatever the issue. No, we are not an orc sync. We are we are affiliated to them. Yeah, they they require you like to go all the way back. That's why we. Oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. Let's see. Okay, so to get Dropbox set up. So thanks to you for coming. Oh, yeah, Hopefully you. you come back again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, <laughs> you gonna look tomorrow or Saturday? Uh, maybe. Okay. Uh, I'll have to see if I'm busy. I actually have a competition this weekend. Yeah.
Wait, which one? Are you it just uh, I think it's soft. Yeah, uh, so it's like it's online and hard to whatever uh, the, yeah. the regional which we're kind of okay. in. Yeah. We have Mega Pass that. Oh, you got me on the browser. Are you guys all going to see? Yeah, I said the browser. Yeah. They don't have that. Are you going to see? We're going to make it the server drums, right? One of the server kits, they're part of it. Wait, is that for security or just holding? Are you guys going to be on Slack at this time? No, we're going to be uh, uh, just in person. Okay. Is that with your friend John? The secret agent? <laughs> Wait, is, is John coming? Is John coming or is he going to the range? Yeah. 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 Cool. Thanks for coming. So Last basically time. it's not open for, for the people to join? John? It's not open okay. for the people to join? Cool. I will, yeah. I'm going to work with the students. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, uh, what does this game do? Oh, absent without Oh, that's a military term. Uh, okay. But it just means uh, like we haven't been, they haven't been responding or like we haven't heard from them. So They're not official part of the team. The slots are. I guess it's fine. Yeah. Or the actual okay, should we continue a little bit? Yes. Yeah. So, cool. <coughs> so, right now, you know how you could do like intercept? Yeah. And then every time you have to forward every single like one packet? Uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to do now? So, what if you just let that sit there? Is there like a like, time to live that? Oh, okay. Okay, okay, sure. Okay. So I'm waiting. Oh, okay, so just to start with that. Okay, so now we're going to move on to HTML so that we can. We're going to talk about some vulnerabilities. Once you have that, it's going to be good. Okay, so I'm sure there's some guys back here. So all of the requests, or most of the requests that we've seen, the response that we're getting back from our HTTP requests are HTML, right? So this, it has a long history. We're not going to go through the history. The idea is we have text, and we're going to mark up the text using special tags. And these tags will add meaning to our raw text. So instead of looking at raw text files, which don't mean anything, we'll use these tags. So there are four types of things. Uh, start tags, so first the start angle, bre brace, mm. angle, arrow, chevron, I don't know. Angle brace. It's a name for it. It's an angle brace. Oh, yeah. Angle brace, yeah. Uh, so, or you can think of less than, greater than symbols, whatever. Uh, then the name of the tag, so that's the first thing after that. And then any attributes of the tag, which we'll get later, and then a closing tag. So this starts a tag. Then you can have some text, maybe not some text, and then you have an end tag. So this closes the tag. So it's the same. So the reason why we know this tag closes this tag is because it has exactly the same name and it has a slash. Uh, the text in here could also have other tags, which we'll look at in a second. Uh, you can also have a self-closing tag, which is this bar with a slash at the end. This means that it's equivalent to having an empty tag right next to each other. So like a start bar and an end bar tag right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So a tag, do that. Uh, lots if of you don't want to fill in anything. Yeah, you don't want anything mm -hmm. in the text, but you want that whatever it represents. Mm -hmm. uh, other tags don't have any end tag implicitly based on their type. So IMG is an image tag. So an image tag has no end, and it doesn't need to be self-closed. Uh, so that's kind of when you're looking at things. So. Tags, fundamentally, I think of them as a tree structure. So tags are hierarchical. Um, so for instance, the simple HTML page, I think probably this may be good. So the outermost tags of this are HTML, right? So you can think of that as the root node of the tree. So this is the tags, and then everything in between that, so there's a head tag, right, starting and closing, and in between that, there's a title tag, 
and there's text in between that title tag of example. This is how, at the top of your tabs in your browser, this is what shows what the title of that web page is. This is exactly how it's done. Then you can have a body, and that body can have some text, like a P or a paragraph tag, and it has some text in there, right? So in this example, you have head, so you have head is a child of HTML, title is a child of head, body is a child of HTML, and body is a sibling of head. They're at the same level. So you have to tilt this kind of on its edge and draw it out. As a tree, HTML would be the top node. It would have two children, head and body. Head would have a child node of title, and body would have a child node of P. So something like this, right? It's like a tree structure like this. Cool. Uh, we don't just have these tags just as they are. These aren't really expressive enough. We also want attributes on the tag. So for instance, like an image tag. Right? Mm -hmm. An image tag tells the browser, we want to include an image here. But where do you get that image from? Right? And what if you can't get that image? What if uh, the person is blind? What text should be there instead of the image? Right? And what so size should be? What size should be, exactly. What size should the image be? Is it a tiny little 10 by 20? Or is it 300 oh, pixels yeah. by 500 pixels? Um, all kinds of attributes. These attributes provide metadata about the tag. So attributes essentially live inside the start tag and after the tag name. So there's four different types of syntax, which make this super confusing, but it's, you get kind of get used to it if you like these things. So one could be just bar. So this means an attribute bar. So if you, foo has some attribute bar, bar does not have a corresponding value. Uh, so foo is the tag name, bar is some attribute. You can also have foo bar equals baz. So now, and the important thing is this is separated by spaces. It can be, has to be at least one space, because otherwise it would be part of the tag name. Mm -hmm. So it has to be one, at least one space, but it can be multiple spaces. This is saying that the attribute bar has the value baz. You can single quote the value. So you can say, and you can double quote the value, uh, but you can't, technically, I don't Only think you can put quotes around, well, around the, Part of the problem with the web is the worst thing you can do if you write a web browser is for the web to break when you browse the web. So web browsers, so HTML is a standard. There is exactly how you should parse it and how it should be parsed. The problem is there's a lot of crappy HTML out there, so browsers will do their best effort parsing and just parse whatever they can parse. So sometimes you can, and that'll, sometimes comes up with vulnerabilities, but so you can sometimes throw random stuff in here and they'll just guess and try to do something and try to make sense of this garbage HTML that you've given it. For the first attribute, does it go to the like, default value? Or how do you it depends on the tag itself. Mm -hmm. So some tags will have default. So what's the scenario that you, you want to have just, um, like, just an attribute? Oh, you mean just an attribute? Um, this is used on forums. I think there's, I, I can't remember, there's certain attributes like no check or like no password field, or I, I can't remember. There's, there are some that are like that. I guess they make the trade off of, do you want to have, is something equal yes or no, or just have something being no and the default being yes? It's not present. No. I've seen it before, I just can't remember. All of but you should figure out, so you Oh yeah, like disabled, there we go, that's good. And you can, so you separate multiple attributes by spaces, and you can have as many as you want, and they can all have this different syntax. Um, okay, cool. The key is what actually makes, what puts the H in HTML for hypertext is the link, right? This is the standard blue link we're all familiar with. So it stands for A, it, the tag itself is just an A, which stands for an anchor tag. Um, href, so the hypertext reference, is what URI does this hypertext point to. In essence, when you click this link, where should your browser take you? Um, and text inside the anchor tag is what your browser displays to you as the anchor. So, this is what a link looks like. So we have A, 
href equals http colon slash slash google.com sample. And it looks like this. Okay. Uh, we don't need to go over basic HTML5 page. Looks like this. If you're trying to do HTML5, this is the standard that, or this is what has to be there, uh, not in terms of the, bo uh, the body here. Uh, <coughs> that presentation is on the um, Dropbox. Yes. It's under training web. Cool. I just added it web security. I'm also recording everything now. Nice. Browsers, your browser is responsible for parsing, interpreting HTML, and displaying it to the user. Lots of types of browsers. Uh, you can have the link browser, like a console-based browser. This is a browser. Uh, this is also a browser. Um, OK, so now, just like we looked at, and this is another thing that's key, just like we looked at with, uh, with URIs, we needed some way to encode special characters like the colon and the question mark and the ampersand and the equal sign to be able to include those as data. So looking at what our sample HTML page, we can already see that <coughs> angle brackets are very important, right? Because angle brackets, and this is the key idea about the web, right? The website just sends text, literally a stream of bytes to your browser. Right? Just like those of you who've taken 340, I harp on a lot, that you take bytes and then you interpret those bytes to finally compile a program or interpret a program. Your browser's doing the same thing. Your browser gets just bytes from the server and then it has to parse that and turn it into HTML. And so the angle brackets tell it, hey, start parsing an HTML tag. But what if you want to have a math equation that says x is less than 10? you want to include the less than symbol. So just like with URI <laughs> encoding, we need a way to encode those special characters. Unfortunately, it's completely different. It is not the same type of encoding, which is part of the reason why the web is so crazy and there's so many vulnerabilities. It's because even just today, we've touched on three different technologies, URI, uh, HTTP, and UR, and HTML. Yeah. Each of them has their own parsing, own file formats, and they can all lead to vulnerabilities. So the character references, so the way this is solved is character references. So we want to include these special characters as text or data, so we encode them. Uh, the annoying thing is, so we start with an ampersand. Um, it's also referred to as entity reference or entity encoding. Names have changed. Everything's, and to make things more confusing, there's three different types of encoding. But everything starts with an ampersand and ends with a uh, semicolon. So that's how you can see it in the HTML text. There are three different types. Name character reference, where you use a name of a character. So for instance, when doing an ampersand, it is the ampersand, the letters AMP, and then semicolon. So AMP stands for ampersand. A less than symbol is ampersand LT semicolon for less than. The greater than symbol, the same way. Um, and there's a list of all of these predefined names for lots of characters. You can also reference, just like URI encoding, you can reference the decimal Unicode code point. So this is how you include Unicode in HTML pages. You can also use the, so for decimal, you include a hash. So you do ampersand hash, and this is decimal. For hexadecimal, you do ampersand dollar sign, uh, ampersand hash x and then the hexadecimal unicode code point. <laughs> and this really, this lack of, you know, the fact that these special characters less than and greater than are the root of essentially cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. Um, so there's three different ways to encode ampersand. All right. So each of these maps to, so when the browser parses it, it sees it as a text <coughs> less than symbol. Well, this one is ampersand. All of this is ampersand, yes. Yeah. Um, if you were to use um, the ampersand um, character uh, code, uh, or maybe like a less than, um, I mean, I'm not sorry about If you were to use angle braces, like instead of putting the actual angle brace, you put the code of it, would that still create the same vulnerabilities? Or would that not be? Um, uh, so we need to study the vulnerabilities more first before I can talk about that and answer that. Uh, but 
fundamentally, so one thing is, if you were just coding up a document and you had a less than symbol and just kept going, the browser would probably interpret that as a less than symbol and not as a start tag. Right? It's only going to do it as a start tag if you try to do less than x and then a space, like it's all kind of one, then now you're messing up the browser's parsing, so different browsers may do it differently, your op spec is all kind of crazy. Uh, but if you want it to appear as text ampersand, you need to use this, any of these four different ways to do this. Um, this is the stupid E on my name, oh, this one's in. the E on my name, <laughs> this is how you do that. Uh, <coughs> absolutely must encode the less than symbol because it indicates to the browser that we're trying to parse things, right? And we're trying to start a new tag. Um, many different ways to do that as well. The most common way is this, this ampersand LT. Um, and if we look at our history, we should be able to see that at some point. So we can see I search for ampersand. That's JavaScript code. Well, okay. Am I really not using this? Sorry, I also know this is small, but I don't know how to make it bigger. Um, maybe I need to add something in. What are you looking for? Any, for the escape? An, Any kind an of escape? Example. There was one up there. It was like ampersand how I see it. Oh, and then right. semicolon, it's like in the corner on the right. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. that one. Uh, ampersand M dash, so an M dash is a long dash. Um, uh, copyright, the copyright symbol, so that would show up on there. Um, so. Wait, but why do you have to, oh, because it's a special character. Yes. <coughs> you can't, it's not, I don't know if there's something that says it has to be ASCII or UTF-8 or something, but to get Compatibility across all browsers because you never know what they're going to have. You should use that for any any non ASCII characters. Mm -hmm. So you can't just put the actual symbol there. Right, in place. right. Because it's it may show up correctly in some browsers because you're you're putting you're sending different bytes down, right? And so it depends on how the browser. What if you about. code the website but you don't care about both browsers? Uh, then you can do whatever you want. Um, okay. So, let's see. Sorry, I thought we'd get to the vulnerabilities. We're, I'm not quite there yet. Um, okay, but this is important. Okay, so when we think about pen testing, when we think about security, we need to think about all the ways that our user input gets into the application. Right, because fundamentally, vulnerabilities boil down to I can, using my input, can get the application to do something it's not supposed to do, right? And so what we need to do, so when we look at this, we can see, basically, looking at this request, we can see that anything in this request we can change, right? We can add additional headers, we can change, we saw it in the repeater, right? I can change and add whatever I want here. So everything that the web site is receiving, that can come from me is potentially untrusted and potential ways that we can get our malicious content into a web application. Um, the other way, so one way is through the URL, as we saw, right, because everything that we send in the URL will get sent to the web application. The other standard way of doing this is a form, right? These are standard HTML forms that we fill out. This is anything, uh, for instance, let's see, what do I have? Do I have anything on the search form, this is a form field. When I type something in and hit enter, stuff happens. Right, the question is what exactly happens? So if we look at the response here, if I look for form. So this is the HTML that generates that form. So it says I'm a form it has several attributes that are important. One is method, which HTTP method do I use to make this request? Do I use get or post? So those are the two different ones, and that will affect the post field, and we'll see it affects other things. The other thing is who do I make this, where do I send this? And this is the action attribute. So this means when you click this search button, 
it's going to send you to google.com slash search. Now, what's being sent? So there's several input fields here. One input field is hidden. It's a parameter's name. It's called site search, and the value is abdupay.com. So this is how Google knows that I want to search my website. And then this is a search field whose name is Q, probably stands for query parameter. Uh, the type is text, which tells the browser to turn it into a, something that we can see, and has a placeholder of search. So if we look at it and we refresh this page, we can see the search here is what the browser puts in there. But it puts in there in that faded kind of way. So fundamentally, forms are really important <laughs> because this is how our data gets into the web application. So we have the action attribute, which tells us where to go. The default, if it's not present, is the current URI. So just submit to the current URI. Method is used. It can be either get or post. The default is get if it's not there. Um, input tags are transformed into, and this is where it gets complicated, so I think we have to stop here for now. Um, but how the data actually gets from the browser to the HTTP request to make this depends specifically on how this is getting sent. So for now, we'll stop it here. Sorry we didn't get to any vulnerabilities, but I think we laid a lot of good groundwork uh, so that we should be able to definitely cover and get to cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and other types of vulnerabilities. So, well, any questions? I actually have to go. So the search was a post? This was a get because it was yeah. a get. So this yeah. is um, it passes the so it didn't actually. So oh, you it can says see method get. Yes, that. exactly. So it said method get. So here you can see it's making a get request to Google.com oh, uh, site colon. So in a get request, it transforms all the user values in this query yeah. parameter here, okay. uh, and that's how it gets yeah. sent. I was hosted on the body in the special. No, I have an old. Maybe I should say this.